Hi, my name is Savannah Davis. I am a junior in California University's bio department, and today I'll be presenting my research on artificial wombs and also be filling a microbial gap in knowledge. Today, over 4 million babies are delivered in the U.S. alone. About 70% of these births are vaginal births, while the last 30% are cesarean births due to choice or by complication. From the beginning of time, childbirth has been the leading cause of death and trauma for women all over the world. And while the rate of mortality uh, via childbirth has significantly dropped since the early 1900s, it is important to note that these complications still exist and can be lethal within the right conditions. Due to a variety of reasons, many women have taken to having these cesarean births to reduce these complications. But what many don't know is that cesarean births lack the mechanism to transfer essential microbes to a child during birth. And in this review of research, I will be assessing the deficits of not being able to perform this, re this action and how it could be the next step in my artificial womb research. So first, I think it's important to go over normal gestation expectations of a human fetus. Human gestation occurs along a 40 week period of development. Any birth from about 24 to 37 weeks of this development is considered premature and can come with a list of complications that range from underdeveloped structures to underdeveloped motor functions. Differences in the common modes of birth are very apparent as vaginal birth is the normal process our body is supposed to go through and cesarean birth is a very complicated surgery. Um, vaginal birth also, like I stated previously, supports the microbial rush. So what is the microbial rush? Studies have shown that the microbial rush stimulated via childbirth has set up children for increased cognitive function. These microbes also contribute to immune system support, gastrointestinal support, respiratory support, and so much more. Research is also being done to connect this microbial transfer with the development of behavioral and psychological disorders such as ADHD, ADD, depression, and anxiety, and more. Some common microbes transferred during birth are bifidiobacteria, which cause lung infections, ulcerative colitis, and certain kinds of diarrhea, and enterobacteria, which cause UTIs, respiratory infections, soft tissue infections, and more. So why is this important? Many of, many of you have heard of good bacteria. This good bacteria works with us to boost our immune functions. Many of these good bacteria can be found in your digestive tract, in your respiratory tract, and pretty much all over your body. And the same is true with microbial rush. Early exposure to the mother's microbes prepares the fetus for exposure later in life. In this way, the fetus system will be able to recognize these microbes and either work with them or fight them off. So for this research, I chose three main studies, uh, Dr. Greenberg's trial run, which is the first patented artificial womb, the EVE platform designated by Dr. Haru Usada, and the BioVac created by the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Greenberg's trial was the simplest of them all, comprised of a tank, amniotic fluid, blood pumps, an artificial kidney, and a water heater. And the EVE and the bio bag were a little more complicated as time and evolution in the bio community has helped them create something completely new. Synthetic amniotic nutrient fluid for diffusion of nutrients, catheters for waste, nutrient, and blood flow that sort of acts like an umbilical cord, and an oxygenator that keeps oxygen levels where they need to be. Not much is known about the trial run of Dr. Greenberg, but much is known about the EVE platform and the bio bag. The EVE results came up at about 85.7 normal function, with the latter being neurological defects, kidney, liver defects, and a host of other respiratory illnesses. The bio bag was successful in gestating up to 28 days, but not much is known about the long-term results. 28 days is also a huge difference than the pinpointed 16 weeks that they were going for. So in conclusion, artificial wombs present a new reality to society, one in which one woman no longer must accept the risk of a life-threatening pregnancy. However, with the introduction of this device is the introduction of mutation. By essentially growing a fetus in an external environment, we're growing them with the host of possible developmental failures. And many wonder if ethically, should we have this much control over this process? 
Current scientists have spent a lot of time developing an external womb that mimics their original environment. However, it's apparent that many functions of the human body can't be reproduced. Microbiology produces a unique opportunity to better understand a human's microbiome and the essential bacteria that help us maintain everyday functions. By filling in this gap in knowledge, the offspring of external wombs could have a better quality of life and a better functionality in several areas of life. And my hope is that mimicking this rush may severely turn around the digestive and respiratory issues that we've seen in failed trials.